Well, the cytochrome oxidase is actually going to wait till it has four electrons. So right now, it has four electrons. So after that, it's going to combine with an O2 molecule. And it's going to go ahead and it's going to grab an O2 molecule from the matrix right here. So one of these O2s is going to go right up there. I just don't, well, I'll go ahead and keep the arrow there, whatever. And it's also going to combine with eight hydrogen ions. So eight eight hydrogen, I just write H plus. So basically, why does it want to combine four electrons with the oxygen in eight hydrogen ions? Well, basically, the four electrons, four of these hydrogen ions, and your O2 is going to form two H2, let me just try it, two H2O molecules. So let's go ahead and keep track of what happened here. This is your O2, and since you have two of them, that balances out since in each H2O there's one oxygen and O2, which is molecular oxygen, has two of them. So you're going to have two H2O molecules, eight hydrogen ions, but if we look at two molecules of H2O, there are only four hydrogen atoms. So what happens is you have four hydrogen ions left over. So those four hydrogen ions are actually going to be shuttled to the other side. So basically once everything is combined in here, all of your different molecules, it's gonna, you know, have a chemical reaction in your, basically you have three ingredients, electrons and oxygen and hydrogen ions. You're gonna make two waters and leftover, you're gonna have four hydrogen ions. And your hydrogen ions, your leftovers are just gonna get shuttled out right here, pumped out to the other side. So again, as you can see, we're producing a lot of hydrogen ions on this side and not a lot on this side. There are a few, you know, over on this side, but not as much as the other side. And I said that because the pumping of hydrogen ions from one side to another side, basically from this side, the matrix, to the space between the inner and outer membrane, it's pretty much going to create a gradient. And a gradient, as you know, is when you have a lot of something on one side and a little of something on the other. So right now we have a gradient, a lot of ions on this side and not a lot of hydrogen ions on the other side. And when we have a gradient in biology, this has a lot of potential energy. Now the potential energy of this gradient is going to be used by this last molecule. This last molecule is called ATP synthase. And let me go ahead and draw it. So ATP synthase is pretty much going to look something like this. And it has a little part that is yellow. Again, if you looked at it in your, you know, under a microscope, probably wouldn't be yellow, but eh, let me draw a blue part. It kind of looks like a weird looking robot jellyfish. But anyways, this is called ATP synthase and I haven't used this color yet. This last one, ATP synthase. Now this is actually the molecule that makes ATPs. Alright, so let's go ahead and you know take a step back and see what we have going on here. We have, okay, we don't have any electrons to work with anymore because those were used whenever we created water right here. All we have is this thing called ATP synthase and a bunch of hydrogen ions, pretty much a hydrogen ion gradient on one side or the other. Well, what's going to happen is this ATP synthase is going to use the energy from this gradient to create ATP. And let me go ahead and explain to you guys exactly how that's going to happen. So the top of your ATP synthase is pretty much going to have, just think of it like two tubes. It has one tube where things can go into it, and it has another tube where things can go out of it. Now what's going to happen is these hydrogen ions from this side right here, is they're going to enter the top of the AT synthase one at a time. So one's going to come in and it's going to be stuck on here. There are actually going to be a few stuck on here. And whenever one comes in, another one goes out. So one goes into the ATP synthase, another one goes out. Now this entering and exiting of H plus ions or hydrogen ions is going to create, it's pretty much going to make the top part of the ATP synthase spin or rotate. 
Now, whenever the top part of this rotates, it creates energy. So think of it like, uh, I don't know, it's kind of like a turbine. This spins and it creates energy, but instead of, you know, like water or something or wind, it uses a gradient of ions instead. So what this does is it creates energy that the bottom part can use. And actually, once you get three, I can draw my three a little better. Come on, Bucky, step it up. Once you get three of these hydrogen ions to enter it, it can create enough energy to make something amazing happen. Well, what amazing thing is going to happen? Well, it's going to take an ADP, which I guess I drew like that, and a phosphate, which evidently is pink. In this bottom part right here, once it has enough energy, it can take these two molecules and smash them together. And of course, whenever you combine ADP with another P, it forms ATP, which is energy. So that's pretty much it. That's how ATP synthase, which is this molecule right here, uses the energy from the gradient to make ATP.